It's been a disappointing campaign for the Gunners so far. In Arsene Wenger's time in charge here, they've never finished lower than second in the Premier League table. But at the moment, Arsenal are no fewer than 11 points behind Manchester United and a massive 25 points adrift of the champions and league leaders Chelsea. This is an historic match here at this famous old ground, the 2000th professional match staged here at Highbury since it was opened in 1913. And remember, it's the final season here before Arsenal moved to their magnificent new stadium just down the road. Thierry Henry back and wearing the captain's armband for Arsenal tonight. As I said, they had a long way adrift of the leading clubs. And Paul, with your old club Liverpool also going well, and even Tottenham ahead of Arsenal in the table, it's by no means certain that they'll finish in the top three this season. Well, no, that's right. And uh, this is a game certainly they've got to start putting things right, winning their home games. They have faltered in recent games. And uh, this will be a big test for them tonight. I think what favours Arsenal maybe tonight, and there's young Theo Walcott, who signed for £12 million recently. Um, he's just been off for 10 days, so he'll be looking to get involved at the club quite quickly. But uh, the thing is, tonight, I think it's going to be a game of football, and I think when it's a game of football, it sometimes suits Arsenal. It's a game like Bolton and Everton, uh, where really Arsenal have faulted the more physical games. It's an obvious question, but one that needs uh, playing anyway. What do you think has gone wrong for Arsenal this season? Well, personally, I think they've, uh, you can underestimate how much they've missed Ashley Cole. I think that uh, drive down that left-hand side, a player that comes from deep, gets behind teams. I think Arsenal have struggled to get behind teams of late. Teams are playing Arsenal inside, making it very congested um, in the midfield and making it very intricate for them to pass through teams. Now, they're excellent at that, but I think they've faltered through those reasons. And a quick word on their opponents tonight, West Ham. They've surprised a lot of people with the season they've had so far. Well, they've got some great ability, Everington down the left-hand side, Benny Yoon on the right-hand side, they've got plenty of strikers now to choose from, Ashton involved, sharing them back to fitness, and uh, they've had a couple of good results lately, uh, you know, the Cup and in the league, so, um, you know, they're scoring goals, there's competition for places, and Pardew, Alan Pardew slowly building up a good squad. How high do you think West Ham can finish this season? Well, you know, I think they're going well at the moment, and... Uh, what I did notice, certainly in the Fulham game, there was, I thought, a little lack of confidence, which was strange in a way. You know, they did have a couple of poor results. Uh, you know, Charlton, they, they got beaten by, and then Chelsea, uh, lost at Wigan as well, and then I thought the confidence just dwindled, but then had a couple of good results, but I noticed for periods in that game, the confidence was fragile. So this is a place they're going to have to start brightly. OK, let's bring you all tonight's team news. One of the main reasons for Arsenal's disappointing form is, of course, the number of players they've had missing. Injuries and international call-ups have deprived them of key men like Ashley Cole and Colo Toure. And tonight they've lost two more players, the Spaniards Jose Antonio Reyes and Cesc Fabregas. They're both suspended. There are three changes from the team beaten by Bolton in the FA Cup. Alexander Kleb and Matthew Flamini dropped down to the subs bench to be replaced by Gilberto and Robert Pires, while Thierry Henry, as you've seen, returns in attack. West Ham make two changes from the side that beat Blackburn Rovers in their FA Cup tie. Christian Daly is suspended, so the former Stoke defender Clive Clark comes in for his Premiership debut at right back. The other change is in attack, where Teddy Sheringham drops down to the subs bench to be replaced by leading scorer Marlon Harewood. New signing Dean Ashton is among the West Ham substitutes tonight. Well, in the last ten days, Arsenal have been knocked out of the Carling Cup and the FA Cup by Wigan and Bolton respectively and they've suffered that Premier League defeat against Everton all matches that normally you would have expected Arsene Wenger's team not to lose so can they get back to winning ways here tonight against the West Ham team who are looking for a fifth successive victory in all competitions they have their talisman back and West Ham have a player who they hope can be their talisman in the future. Just caught sight there of Dean Ashton on the West Ham substitutes bench. A £7 million signing. He wasn't available for the uh, first game that he might have played in, the FA Cup tie, because he had a groin injury. He's recovered from that. He is fit. But Alan Pardew has decided to leave him on the bench tonight, and he's almost spoiled for choice. Teddy Sheringham, Marlon Harewood, uh, Bobby Zamora, 
And now Dean Ashton, a, a useful quartet of strikers, Paul. Well, that's right, and he's got different types. I mean, Dean Ashton, probably the closest type of player to Teddy Sheringham. But tonight he's gone for uh, good athletes, if you like, Harewood and Zamora, hoping that they can really press Arsenal back and, and run the channels and uh, get the ball in behind. Uh, but sometimes you just think they might need that little bit of clever play, but he's got the option always to bring either Sheringham or Ashton on. As far as Arsenal are concerned, they start the game currently seven points behind Liverpool, who occupy third place. Liverpool also in action tonight, they're at uh, home to Birmingham City. The referee is Mark Halsey. West Ham in their chain strip of white shirts. Arsenal in their one-off kit, harking back to the old days. It is officially, officially, I should say, red current. Ivory marks its 2000th game. With what should be a very entertaining fixture between two teams who like to get the ball down and play. Lundberg first to see the action on the right-hand side for Arsenal with a much change back four these days, Jens Lehmann's been a consistent figure in goal of course, he started every single Premiership match but the back four in front of him have changed a lot Juru and Senderos in that department tonight, as Arsenal attack straight away, and almost a moment of confusion there, and Van Persie goes down it was a rash challenge Clark, the new man saying, uh, I didn't get the shout, but I think he has to hold his hand up and say that was a poor challenge. Well, there was two players getting in each other's way and the ball just broke to the right-hand side and Clark had to go for it. I've got to be honest, I thought Van Persie played for it all the way. And he didn't hang about with the free kick. Well, you look at reasons, Alan, why maybe Arsenal had faulted as well. And you mentioned that back four, they've had to change it. They had Senderos at left-back, they've had Sigan at left-back. They've changed it several times, a central defensive pairing. Toure away, so it's been difficult for Arsene Wenger and that's another key reason why they haven't had that continuity and maybe got the results at times. Great little header down there by Henri. And he made a very uh, uncertain start here, it was a good challenge in the end by Konczewski but he seemed to lose his geography a little bit at first in the back four, looking very nervy early on here for West Ham. A lot of indecision in the West Ham back four. Last thing you want to do at Highbury is give away an early goal. That's because they've scored 27 goals in the Premier League at home this season, Arsenal. Only Chelsea have scored more home goals, and they've only let in four, a defensive record they share with Liverpool. Roberto, the Brazilian, back in the centre of Arsenal's midfield, where they've lost their Fabregas because of suspension. And dropping down to the bench. Pires returning on that left hand side though. Layoff to Diaby. And the uh, new faces. Lundberg. Gilberto takes over again. He's got a bit too much on that. Senderos races to keep it in play. I just saw Lundberg there just lost the momentum. Gilbert made a good overlap down the right hand side. I thought he could have played him in. Hesitated. And refunding Van Persie, it was a good block by Gabidon. Leatherington, who's been in excellent form for West Ham this season. And he never reached that level. West Ham comfortably placed in mid-table with 32 points. 13 points clear of the relegation places where many uh, pundits predicted they would be this season. But they seem set for... A much more successful campaign than that. They've won nine of their 23 Premier League games. They've also lost nine and drawn the other five. And his layoff is easy for him and tidy, but Van Persie's looked lively early on. Yeah, I think this is Arsenal's best forward partnership, Thierry Henry and Van Persie. A good balance and a good mixture of what they're good at. Incidentally, have already lost seven games in the Premier League. Six of those defeats coming away from home. Chelsea, the only team to beat them here at Highbury. Chelsea prevents the corner. 
Evans in there to help out. And driven forward to Harewood, who's a massive physical presence. Ian Zamora, two very dangerous players. That's the back four will have to be on their toes tonight against those two. Gilbert, the youngster, who's uh, just 18, London-born player. Right back, Sander Ross is really a centre-back, forced to fill in that position at left back, Ashley Cole, and, and indeed Kyle Cliche, both out injured for Arsenal at the moment. And Marie comes to win it back. The usual high-tempo start here from Wenger's team. Jungber. Campbell. There's Diaby. Coker making the challenge. Might be a corner, that's why they were so anxious uh, to make it into a throw. Yeah, keeping the ball well, Arsenal in the middle third. Just getting all the players having a good touch, working those spaces. And danger here for the Hammers. Oh, how on earth did that not go in? Even he doesn't know. Thierry Henry can't believe it. Yeah, they have a lot of time to watch it come down, got a good contact on it. I think West Ham will be disappointed how easily Arsenal get in in the first place. And that comes off of Lundberg's knee. Well, he could have easily deflected it beyond his lock. Instead, he deflected it wide. Lundberg, one of the few uh, first-team stars who played in the FA Cup against Bolton at the weekend. And he has made a lot of changes in recent weeks. He's had to, of course players to the African Cup of Nations as well as injuries and suspensions. Uh, Koka beaten to it. Diaby has been likened by some to a uh, Vieira type, he's certainly tall and rangy, like his predecessor here, but still a young man. Taking his time. And the RB beaten to it in the middle. Rio Coca claiming uh, free kick there. Mr. Halsey not interested. Senderos. Perez down the left. To take on Clark. Forced inside, but he was quite happy to find Van Persie in that position. Oh! Another near miss. Yeah, it was great skill. I did think he was going to take it on first time with his left foot. Shapes up his over, he's going to do that. It's a great little reverse ball in from Pires. He turns out, then he turns back again, opens the angle up. Strike hits the outside of the post. Gabidon getting twisted every way. That's fractions away from being a fantastic finish. And he thought he'd score the goal that sent... Uh... Arsenal to another cup final, of course, last week against Wigan here, but a late goal by Jason Roberts. Gave Wigan Athletic the victory in that Carling Cup semi-final. Now we're looking uh, bemused about the decision that's gone against him. Not a man to mess with. There's young Gilbert. Lindbergh takes over. Yarby back to Juru. Alongside him. Oh, lovely ball. Pires. Henry does love to drift out to that left hand side and gets it back to Pires. They're queuing up in the middle, including Jungberg. That's a corner. Yeah, so we're looking to get him down its left hand side and clever passes in behind the West Ham defence and well timed runs are, are getting them in at the moment. High octane start here from Arsenal. Can West Ham hold on in this critical period? A lovely turn here, but he's been uh, forced into the crowd of players, Van Persie, and wins another corner. Well, another great situation for Arsenal. Certainly at Highbury, they do create a lot of chances. standing right in front of the West Ham keeper, Shaka Hislop. Mullins in front of him. And not easy for the keeper to see this as it comes over. He was very relieved that it was a poor corner. Well, it was by Robert Perez's standards. That was a poor delivery. 
too high, too long. Really let West Ham off the hook. Head start though by Arsenal. And Ian Pardew will know he's in for a long night here. Sort of turned things around exceptionally well, hasn't he? He had his critics early on when he took over at West Ham, but he's answered them in the best possible style. Yeah, yeah I just feel they've had very good success early on, started very well. Just feel like he's trying to protect that at times now, Alan Pardew. I just think it needs a Sheringham or an Ashton on the pitch to hold the ball up because when they're in possession, as soon as it goes forward, they're not really getting hold of it and giving themselves a chance to enjoy the ball. We can slow it down here. Scored 31, conceded 32 West Ham this season. And there's also a perfect symmetry to their away record. Four wins, four draws, four defeats. It looks to me like Marlon Harewood's gone out on that right-hand side. And certainly when they lose possession, West Ham, he's going to drop into an all, almost a right midfield role as a five in the middle. Here's Perez for Arsenal, who started very brightly. Senderos. Exactly his love in goal because Roy Carroll is not injured at the moment, the former Manchester United man, Manchester international. Hugely experienced keeper, though, his lot. It's his fifth Premier League game this season, and he also played in a winning FA Cup tie against Blackman at the weekend. There's Mullins for West Ham. Huge amount of possession in the opening ten minutes for Arsenal. They've had a lot of the ball, and that statistic certainly backs that up, and they've created two or three very good positions. They haven't scored a goal yet. And I just feel that West Ham certainly could do with it, and now it's Sheringham holding things up and just giving them a chance. Roberto quite happy to let it run for a corner. Never done the defender. And Arsenal keep the pressure on early on here. Two big defenders, Senderos and Campbell, the latest problem for West Ham's defenders to deal with. And Percy will deliver. And a decent delivery as well, Senderos just beaten to it on the far post, Perez with a half-hit shot, and West Ham have got away with it. So important, the way Arsenal always come out of the blocks flying here at Highbury, that you dig in for these opening stages. Well, that's right, and uh, that was a better delivery on that occasion. But Senderus, those players close to him, making it difficult for him to get free. And they have got to be very strong in their defending, because I think they're going to be, on the basis of what we've seen so far, doing a lot of it tonight. Wellington just beaten to it by Young Gilbert. And Chesky playing it long. And there's just been no service at the moment to Hellwood and Zamora, West Ham's front two. And Chesky. Gabidon. Outside, isn't it? Oh, well, Lehman couldn't take the risk, he came dashing from goal anyway, but it is offside. West Ham are going to find it very difficult to, to re retain any possession because it's their long and hopeful balls. And you play against, you know, strong defenders, Campbell, Juru, big physical players. Turned on by Etherington. Tomorrow oh, couldn't retain possession for long, but Rio Coca comes out with the ball. Clever little player as well at West Ham now, the youngest skipper since the great Bobby Moore. Here's Gabidon. And Pinchesky. Well, at least they'll give them a, a little bit of a breather here, this period of possession, albeit deep inside their own half, as Pinchesky now launches it. See, they're keeping it across the back four there, Alan, with no real purpose. They're just keeping hold of it for the sake of keeping hold of it. And then once they get closed down, they're just hitting the longer ball. And that isn't really West Ham, is it? No, 
Well, it certainly isn't the kind of football that's got them to where they are at the moment. Here's Pires. Giavi. Gilberto. Arsenal moving the ball sweetly as ever. Jungberg leaves it to Kerry Gilbert, the teenager. Campbell. Away by Ferdinand. Plenty of time for Juru, the Ivory Coast. Well, it looks to me like West Ham have decided it's a game of football that they can't win, so they're going to play slightly different, slightly more defensive. There's Harewood over on that right-hand side. He's dropping deeper and, and making a five, really, in midfield. Zamora up on his own. They can't get out of their own half, really, when they're in possession, apart from that long, hopeful ball, and it's coming straight back at them. Well, it's a tactic that works until you concede a goal, of course. And it's all about plan B. There's Mullins. That wasn't a bad ball over the top, but uh, well judged by Lehman. 15 minutes gone here in the Barclays English Premier League. Arsenal nil, West Ham nil. It's been almost entirely Arsenal possession so far. So Campbell for them. Oh, not like him. Oh, Gavidon. He just launched it long, and Zamora got a pat on the head there from Jura's challenge. Ferdinand. There's Konczewski. And he's got to be careful, Juru, that he doesn't commit the foul. The RB got back to deny Etherington. That was uh, West Ham's best move so far. There's young Gilbert again. Jungberg. Encouraging Gilbert to get forward on the overlap. Well, certainly now that West Ham have dropped Harewood into that right-hand side position, Arsenal just find it a little bit tougher to find those gaps. The RB. Step clear again by West Ham. Lauren is the other... Uh, First choice player currently missing, of course, for Arsenal. He's injured. So a lot, a lot of absentees from this Arsenal side. But they just seem to have an assembly line here. Even the youngsters who come in slot very easily into the system. Mullins. Back to Ferdinand. And to Clark. And a nervy start for the. Uh, Premiership Davidson, who's only played in a Carlin Cup tie so far. And uh, let it run, and Konczewski read the danger. Mullins. Rio Coca. Good ball forward if he can reach it, Harewood. And he's still going strong. He's all on his own, there's no support, he's got to go for goal. That's right, once Gilbert went over, the ball just broke free for Zamora. Had to try and just work that space and get his shot away. Brilliant burst of pace from Thierry Henry. How often do we see that? Oh, I don't like to see that, however. No, no. I and mean, he is so good, he doesn't need to be going around suggesting the referee produces yellow card. No, take the free kick, accept the free kick, but uh, he doesn't normally do that, to be fair to him, and uh, we certainly don't want to see him doing that. Mr. House is making that very point as well. The best way to make his point is to go and stick the ball in the back of the net, which he's well capable of doing from here. He's done it many times before. Leading scorer, as usual, with 17 goals, Thierry Henry. That's his lot. That means that the three-man wall. And Percy, the other option for Arsenal. Dutchman who takes it. Well, he's a good strike. He's a long way out, a good 25 yards out. It's going to have to be a fantastic hit to beat Shaka Islock from there. He has got it in his locker, though. Oh. Oh. He scored 10 goals this season, Van Persie. has another injury problem. 
Oh, the shirt's ripped to shreds on the back. I don't know how that came about. A grapple with Zamora, I suspect. Look at that. All right. That's amazing. This is a teenager, Harry Gilbert. You see how it happened now. That was that earlier uh, charge into the box by Bobby Zamora. I think his studs just uh, caught his shirt and ripped it. Just see it from this angle. Goes to ground, yeah, just catches his studs. Well, it may be a very historic old kit, this, but it's pretty flimsy by the looks of it. So, uh, the kit man, Vic Akers here, who also runs the uh, Arsenal ladies' team. Almost as successful as the men's team they are. He'll certainly be called upon, but first, Gary Lewin, the physio, has to deal with Gilbert's injury. Yeah, he's got a back problem. He's just manipulated his back. Just to see him there, put his left hand down at the bottom. Left hand side. And there's Vic Akers with the replacement jersey for Kerry Gilbert. Making his ninth appearance in the first team. Didn't make his debut until uh, November. Talking to the kit man of Chelsea the other day, Paul, and it is quite astonishing how many sets of strip the average Premiership club gets through these days. Uh, they probably spend as much money on playing kit as lower division clubs plan to, uh, spend on their players' uh, wages, I think. Someone told me the other day that they get three shirts each for a game. That's right, so they can exchange them or do what they like with them. Well, Gilbert's lost one of those three anyway. But it looks as though he's going to be all right to carry on. High tech these days, the uh, physio is in touch with the bench. And Percy losing the initial challenge. And Clark heads out. Arsenal's throw. And that scrappy little period has just uh, been able to. Enable West Ham to draw breath. Well, I certainly think it's how it's gone on that right hand side. Arsenal have found it harder to break West Ham down. It's maybe not quite the game of football we expected. We saw West Ham over the Christmas period when they played Chelsea and they set out their stall in a similar fashion to this. Ended up conceding, of course, and ended up losing, losing almost inevitably. Uh, they did get a goal back early on in that game, and that gave them the impetus to return to their attacking ways, and they looked a much better team for it. And my Edmonton then, by uh, Zamora. That's good skill by Benayou. Not uh, so much of the ball yet. Konczewski. And the Israeli international finds a way through. How many uh, Arsenal shirts were around, though? Yeah, just sort of that. Took it on himself, Benny Yu. And then seems from Anton Ferdinand, and you don't uh, take risks either with Henri breathing down your neck. Midway through the first half here at Highbury, Arsenal nil, West Ham nil in the Barclays English Premier League. Juru and to Campbell. Samuel Ross has gone forward, he's on that to halfway line. Goes in instead to Pires. Going back well by West Ham. Gabadon. Well, that's Paul, straight to Jungberg. And the ball over the top is an absolute beauty. Well, just as Van Persie was about to pull the trigger, he had the ball whipped off his toe. Yeah, well, it was a great pass, wasn't it? His first touch took it back towards Gabadon, which gave him a chance to sort the situation out. Better first touch from Van Persie, I'm sure he would have had a finish from it. Now Etherington for West Ham. Pace and good close control. He's opened things up for them here. Elwood. Comes in more in the centre at the moment. Well, he can't just chuck the ball in and he's lost it anyway. Perez. Gabadon. Oh, just when West Ham did have players ahead of the ball, Gabadon decides to go back to his goalkeeper. 
Yeah, this is where they've struggled. Look, Koncheski's looking, what can I do with it? He's having to go for the big crossfield pass, even that's a very good one. Beautiful ball, isn't it? Howard. Into Benayou. No real sting in the shot. Oh, it was better play, though. Great crossfield pass from Koncheski. Weak effort in the end, but at least they've had an effort on target. What a terrific goal, Van Ayun, in the uh, last Premier League match against Fulham. And Tom Ferdinand. He just headed it away there, scored an even better one. Oh, there's two unbelievable strikes, aren't there? Now there's a way through for Rio Coca. This could be a surprise lead, <laughs> and is totally against the run of play. West Ham are in front. Rio Coca the scorer. Would you believe it? Well, unbelievable. When I was questioning, I've got to be honest, I was questioning Alan Pardew's tactics, but they've got a goal up. Poor defender by Campbell, what is he doing? Once Rio Coca gets through there, just totally misses it, maybe Rio Coca just gets a touch on it. Once he's through, keeps his head. I think he just got, just got the slightest of touches on it as it was coming to Campbell, took it away from him. As I say, keeps his head, just tucks it through the legs of Lehman in the end. There's Alan Pardew, he's delighted. That's well, the first goal Nigel Rio Coca has scored since he made his Premier League debut against Blackburn back in August. And the 21-year-old has given West Ham a lead they could not have dreamed of here in the first 25 minutes. Arsenal having dominated possession and created a number of opportunities themselves, they've already hit the post, of course, find themselves a goal behind. Well, that was it early on, they had so much of the ball, so many good situations, but haven't taken any of their chances. And then Alan Pardew changed it, Harewood to the right-hand side, made themselves a lot harder to break down, and they've hit Arsenal on the break. Nothing seems to be going right for Arsenal Wenger at the moment, and Sol Campbell, it made a mistake, really, that led to Wigan's goal, which was the crucial goal, and knocked Arsenal out in the Carling Cup semi-final. Has made another error here. From Chesky. And to Everington. Oh, their confidence will be absolutely boosted by that, of course, West Ham. And suddenly it's Arsenal looking jittery and on the back foot. Make a substitution as well here, Arsenal. Young Gilbert uh, will come back to that as Benayoun strikes one straight against Campbell. I think the free kick had already gone against him, but uh, Young Gilbert is still struggling from that back problem and might have to come off. There's a substitution, Flamini. Will he play in the middle? Can Diaby go to right back, maybe? I don't know. Will Flamini play there? Big disappointment this for Kerry Gilbert, who uh, started the season probably about third or fourth choice uh, right back. He must have been amazed to find himself playing so many games. Now he's got an injury that's interrupted his run in the team. Harmony, a central midfield player, of course, and as Paul says, it'll be interesting to see how they readjust here, the Gunners. A goal behind as well. Ferdinand's clearance. Koka looking for and finding Marlon Harewood, who's West Ham's leading scorer. And he's uh, therefore rather unlucky to be dropped down to the subs bench for the FA Cup game against Blackburn. Oh, look very cool there, Alan Pardew, but he must have uh, inside thought, how oh, on earth are we in front here? started the new year really well after a disappointing end to 2005 when they managed just one win in seven and they are looking for a fifth successive victory tonight remember they've beaten uh, Aston Villa and Fulham in the Premier League Norwich and Blackburn in the FA Cup and in that competition they're away to Bolton Wonders in the next round the team that knocked out Arsenal has been a straight swap for me going straight in, in that right back position for Gilbert. Right. Looking 
afford to slow it down now after Rio Coca's splendid run and finish. Certainly that early spark has gone out of the Arsenal side. A little bit of tempo that they had to their play. They were passing the ball around very brightly, very quickly. And a little flurry of chances, didn't score. West Ham changed it and uh, had a look back. Chesky needs to get that away, he took a risk. Only across the field again, though, and the uh, crowd getting a bit frustrated with Arsenal. Perez finding Senderos, his cross useful. Konczewski has suspicion, but he might have used an arm to bring that under control. Referee not interested. And what about 30 now? To Benayou. Harewood. That will be a free kick. Well, there's certainly a hint of suspicion as the ball came in that it just maybe just clipped his arm. It's travelled quite a long way. Oh, it's off the shoulder. Top of the arm, maybe. Well, I think there has been one or two of them given this season. I think it would have been harsh, mind. Came to him with an awkward height, but uh, as you say, other referees might have read that differently. Ferdinand, rather like his more famous brother, never seems to be hurried. Gabadon, who's made the transition from Football League ranks with Cardiff City very successfully. Welsh International, of course. And Chesky. Wellington first to keep it in. West Ham have lost on each of their last eight visits to Highbury in the Premier League. Well, they did hold uh, Arsenal to a nil-nil draw when the sides met at Upton Park back in September. They haven't actually won on this ground for 11 years. As Konczewski delivers a useful looking ball for Zamora, they could be in again here. Oh, what a finish! It's unbelievable at Highbury. West Ham are 2-0 up now. <laughs> Well, it is unbelievable, you're dead right. I can't believe it, the way that this game has changed itself around. A very good angled pass from Koncheski again. Takes it nice and just out muscle Sol Campbell, turns inside, weighs his options up. He says, I'm going to take this on myself and bends it beautifully into the corner. Physical player Zamora up for the challenge there. But what a finish that is. Great execution. West Ham just can't believe that they're two up in this game. Zamora's fourth goal in his last five games. And no one in this ground with about 15, 20 minutes gone. And I think that would have included Alan Pardew, would have dared to predict that scoreline after 32 minutes. Arsenal nil, West Ham two. As I said, football's a funny game should have definitely painted the phrase, because we've seen wise at night. There's no doubt for me, though, Alan, that since Harewood's gone to that right-hand side, they've played with a five. But Arsenal have just run out of ideas. And here they come again. Rio Coca. Ooh, getting all the little touches on the ball and everything now. Must have a team transformed here. Zulu has to concede the throw. The relatively inexperienced players, of course, in that back four, but we'll be looking for more leadership at this moment from Sol Campbell. And uh, his continuing erratic form may be a problem for the England manager as well. well. I think it will be when you look at the role that Sol Campbell's had in both the goals. Disappointing. He's better than that. And now it's Arsenal giving away possession, and that's so unlike them. Do have a wonderful home record, the Gunners. Nine wins in 11 league games here. Chelsea again, the only team who've won more matches at home. But they're 2-0 down and struggling at the moment to find their rhythm. Chelsea, the only team to win here. Manchester United, the only other team to avoid defeat here. We have a remarkable match on our hands.
Senderos. And that's part of the problem, I guess. You've got a, a rookie centre-back playing at left-back. You've got an experienced centre-back making mistakes like that. And then you've got Juru alongside him. You've got Gilbert at right-back. Now you've got Firmini at right-back. Problems mount for Mr Wenger, who's never finished lower than second in each of his previous eight full seasons as Arsenal's manager. The chances of them finishing second at this moment are looking pretty remote indeed. They could face the humiliation of finishing below their arch-rivals Tottenham, who are currently two places and four points ahead of them. Diaby. Oh, that's great play. Henri, they need a big performance from him now. Romani, the makeshift right back. Jungberg. Away by Rio Coca. Quite fine Harewood though. Campbell. Easy for Ferdinand. Diaby. Blundered his way through, and Henri skillfully picked his way through. But in the end, West Ham closed the door again. Well, every time Arsenal have had a situation like that, West Ham have just got away with it, just coped with it, just got a toe in, just got a leg in the way. I just sense maybe if Arsenal just get that elusive goal, it just might spark them into life. And DRB is just 19, despite his... Uh, Considerable physical presence there in the middle. Uh, but uh, Wenger signed from Auxerre, the French club with a terrific tradition for producing good young players. There's Flamini. And to Jungberg, has been quiet so far. And he tries to win the corner, and uh, does so, yeah, just... Just about. Retherington and Koczewski coped with Flamini and Lundberg well there. Didn't dive in, didn't make it easy for them, stood up. And Percy backs away into the corner of the ground where the visiting fans are. He'll be getting a bit of abuse as he crosses that one in. Freddie Jumbert. Just chipped it back in. Easy clearance. Now Herwood. He used the sheer muscle there, and the referee didn't like it. Well, he just knocked it and thought he could outrun Senderus. Just lent on him at the end. Senderus just a bit fortunate to maybe get the, the free kick. And their last home game in the Premier League. Arsenal front Middlesbrough 7-0. There'll be no repeat. Well, that kind of emphatic victory tonight. And since then, by the way, and in fact, including that, just one win in the last four league games. They've also lost at Everton, drawn against Manchester United, and Aston Villa in that spell. Not the form you expect of Arsenal. Far from it. Juru on to Flamini. Better. No way forward in a moment for Perez. He picks out a good ball for Jungberg. And Arsenal get one back before half time. Romani, Diaby, Jungberg. That's a good ball. And that was a good tackle as well. One person complains, but there's nothing wrong with the challenge by Gabidon. He's got great little turns, Van Persie, in those situations, but Gavidon read it, stuck to him, managed to get a toe in, do a great job for his team there. We have to give full marks to West Ham. They uh, withstood the early Arsenal storm, and they hit back with two opportunist goals. Here's Jungberg. An unnecessary free kick to concede by Rio Coca. Put him under pressure there. 
Well, I don't think he agreed with that, but uh, just got a bit close to Lundberg, maybe just stuck the brakes on, and Rio Coca going into the back of him, and Arsenal winning a free kick in a decent area. Plenty of men there. Huge crowd around the penalty spot. And Percy and Pires over the ball. It's Pires who lifts it into that crowd of players, but well defended. There's Konczewski for West Ham. And that wasn't a bad ball either, and suddenly Arsenal's back four was looking very flat. That wasn't a bad ball, just teased it in the back of the Arsenal defence. Luckily, Lehman was on his guard, came out and dealt with it. Oh, here goes the magician again. And he's looking for the return from Diaby, who couldn't quite pick him out. Oh, I think uh, West Ham thought they were going to get a free kick then. And Gilberto totally wastes possession, and you can feel a little bit of a dissatisfied mood growing amongst the fans. Well, I mean, you know, what was he seeing? What was he aiming for? It was very difficult to see what he was trying to pick out with that pass. Certainly, you can just sense the frustration around Highbury at the moment. Started off very brightly. It's all gone terribly wrong for Arsenal. Who, well, by the way, I find this an astonishing statistic. Arsenal have only won half their 22 league games this season. I cannot ever remember us getting into uh, February and their win count being as low as that, despite all that possession. Tonight, anyway. They so wanted to mark this final season at Highbury with uh, success. They could still do yet, of course. Let's remind ourselves they are in the uh, next stage of the Champions League. But their form has got to improve immeasurably for them to make progress in that competition. And all this, and a £7 million striker itching to get on for West Ham. As I said before the match, you'd be wondering how he can get into this side. Fucking hell! Into the final three and a half minutes here. I mentioned Ashton. He can play a bit as well. He's the Sheringham in reserve. And the confidence now flowing from a West Ham team who started like nervous kittens. What a difference a goal makes. Two, even better. And a generous free kick awarded to Arsenal. Perez coming off that left touch line. Senderos. That's a clever little turn. Percy is not the likeliest, the most likely player to uh, get Arsenal back into the picture here. Jungberg. Konczewski blocks it at the expense of a corner. Yeah, Lundberg just trying to work that little bit of space for himself so he can get a delivery into the box. Konczewski once again sticking very tightly to him, not diving in. Fifth Arsenal corner, and West Ham will have to concentrate hard here. They don't want to ruin their good work of this first half by conceding now. Ferdinand watching Campbell closely. And Percy swings it out. Campbell playing it back in. On retry to close range. Shot and off the line by uh, Ben Ayuna, I think it was. And then Jungberg with a wild effort. Well, certainly West Ham have rode their luck on a couple of occasions tonight. And this is another one. Ball bobbling around all over the place, just helped back in. As it comes out, is it Diaby hit that? Jura, I think. Juru cleared off the line, but that's what he's there for. Defensively doing his job, Benny Yun. Well, it's one of those nights, isn't it, for West Ham at the moment. They're riding their luck, they're playing good football. They've taken their only two goal-scoring chances exceptionally well. And it's been a wonderful first half for them. Was 
a minute of it remaining. Marjo still uh, keeping his players on their toes, though. Yeah, but he really needs to get in at half-time with a two-goal lead intact. He just feel that Arsenal could just steal something before half-time. May well change the face of the second half. Tentative now, the Arsenal passing, whereas it was crisp and precise early on. Senderos. Franceschi's mistake. Head into Freddie Jungberg. His lot with the save and off the line again by Ferdinand this time and it's deflected in. And West Ham have failed to keep their two-goal lead intact. A weird goal as Pires takes the celebrations. There was a penalty appeal moments before that when Jungberg went down under the challenge from his lot. Koncheski's initial error. Well, I've certainly seen those given as well. Koncheski would be disappointed with his role in the goal, could well have got that away. Lundberg just eases it away from Shaka Hislop and he brings him down, there's no doubt about that. Fortunately for Arsenal, Robert Pires finishes this off. Breaks out to him, controlled side foot finish, takes a deflection off of Thierry Henry on the way through. I think he'll be claiming that one. Slice and nicks off his right foot. Well, a bit of debate about that one, <laughs> but uh, Arsenal don't care. They've got a goal back, and they could get another goal back. Well, what an astonishing 45 minutes we've seen here. And the uh, electric scoreboard, as you can see, is awarding the goal to Perez. The captain might have a different view on that. And that'll be just what Alan Pardew didn't want. He just sense uh, that the, the balance of play could well swing the other way. Now we come right up to half time, but we're a little bit deflating for West Ham. But they are still in the lead. And they have looked dangerous when they threatened like this. Gabidon's clearance, but uh, suddenly Arsenal don't want the first half to come to an end now. Oh, it's made for a terrifically entertaining game. Yes, they've changed their minds now and given it to Thierry Henry. It was just the slightest of touches, but when you're leaving scorer, you claim them all. And uh, Walsh, I'm sure you'll know all about that. <laughs> well, I think actually it was an important touch. I thought the ball may have been cleared, but had it not been for that slightest of touches, uh, certainly would have been a better chance of it getting cleared if he hadn't got that touch on it. Spoken like a true striker. Here's Diaby. And there's the half-time whistle, and what a half at Highbury. The 2000th game here, remember? And it looks as though it's going to be marked with a memorable match. Sol Campbell made an error to allow Rio Coca in to score the first goal for West Ham, totally against the run of play. Then Zamora added a brilliant second, a really terrific finish from the West Ham striker. At that stage, Arsenal looked all over the place, but a shot by Pires, helped in by Thierry Henry, has brought Arsenal back into the picture. At half-time, Arsenal 1, West Ham 2. Welcome back to Highbury. 
Uh, West Ham take the field for the second half, leading Arsenal by two goals to one here in this Barclays English Premier League fixture. Really entertaining first half, in which Arsenal started in superb form, came close on a couple of occasions, hit the post in fact. It was West Ham who broke away to score first through Nigel Rio Coca and then got a second through Bobby Zamora before the goal by Thierry Henry brought Arsenal back into the picture just before half-time. In the break, Arsene Wenger has made a very interesting change here. Sol Campbell, who didn't have the best of first halves, has gone off. They're trying to establish whether that is tactical or because of an injury. And the young man who's replaced him is Sebastian Larsson, who's really a midfield player. And we caught sight there of Senderos, and maybe Senderos now will go into the centre and other switches will have to be made by Wenger for this second half. Larson didn't realise that uh, you have to wait before you enter the field. He's uh, Swedish, and this is his Premier League debut. He's played in half a dozen cup ties for Arsenal, including, in fact, in the Champions League earlier this season. So he's uh, another of these inexperienced players in a very unfamiliar looking Arsenal lineup now. Arsenal 1. West Ham two. Well, actually looks like he's gone to a left left back position, Alan. So uh, I don't know how much experience he's got playing that role, but uh, we're about to find out. Well, right footed, I think. I haven't actually seen him play because, uh, as I said, he's only played half a dozen times and never in the Premier League. I think if you'd have said at the start of the season, Arsenal would have fielded this particular eleven in an important Premier League match. No one would quite have believed it. There's some uh, names there that weren't too well known outside Highbury before the start of this campaign. But he's got straight into the action, the young Swede. And here's Thierry Henry. Back again to Larson, whose cross is looped into the hands of Shaka Hislop. And we do get uh, confirmation now from the Arsenal dressing room that the substitution of Sol Campbell was not enforced by injury it was a tactical change and I can't ever remember him being taken off apart from in the late stages of games for reasons other than injury well that would mean the manager watching not a happy night for Sol Campbell I uh, just wonder what may have got said at half time don't you to bring that change on so he does look a bit of a worried man Arsene Wenger Certainly that goal just before half-time will be a massive help to Arsenal in this second half. And it will certainly have uh, produced a few butterflies in the tummy for these uh, West Ham players who are flying at one stage when they were leading 2-0. That one goal will have introduced nagging doubts, you can be sure of that. That one goal, by the way, now officially credited to Thierry Henry in the background there, and it's a significant goal for the Arsenal striker. I'll tell you more about that in a moment as Jungberg attacks down the right and takes on and beats Konczewski. Didn't quite find Van Persie. It has looked lively tonight. Yabi gets himself into a good position to receive the throw and kept it well and finds Jungberg. I certainly think West Ham have got a mark better from throw-ins deep in their half because uh, I think Alan Pardew will be a bit disappointed on a couple of occasions, a straight throw into the box and they found space. Here's Pires, whose shot led to Henri's assist, or the other way around if you want to call it that, for the Arsenal goal. Now Jungberg taking on Konczewski again with some success. And they've been a bit there, the uh, fullback. Now Diaby, oh, good strike. And a player yet to score, of course, in first team football. Well, as soon as it comes in on that left foot, good strike away. Gavidon gets the block in. Both he and the uh, newcomer, the substitute Larson playing in the Premier League for the first time, or at least in uh, the RB's case, starting for the first time. 
It's just a little experience when you look around the field here. Certainly in English football in the Arsenal ranks. Zulu, another of those who hasn't played too much. He was born in the Ivory Coast, but he's actually Swiss by nationality. Away by Ferdinand. And Percy hooks it on. Van Percy finding Pires. Give it away as cheaply as that. The RB just nudged the side and Mullins and then lost possession himself to Marlon Hayward. Sanderos. They're in a hurry to get on with it now, Arsenal. If they win, they'll go above Wigan into fifth place in the Premier League table. Even a draw would see them go above Wigan anyway on their goal difference. Etherington for West Ham, who still lead here. Gordon has done well to take on and beat Flamini. But Pace Etherington, a dangerous low cross, turned behind for a corner. That's right, good positive play from Matthew Etherington. Really got at Flamini. Just lost his balance, but to be fair to him, stuck to the job and got back at Etherington made it difficult for him to really deliver with quality. Remarkably, West Ham's first corner. Zamora standing right in front of goalkeeper Lehman. Ben Ayun will deliver the kick. Stayed into the keeper's hands. That is disappointing. And Pardew will be angry about that. Here goes Thierry Henry on a trademark run. Just got clipped there by... The challenge from Gabidon, who's trying to recover his position, and the referee's decided that's worthy of a yellow card. Well, he did clip Thierry Henry, there's no doubt about that. Whether that challenge in itself warranted a yellow card, I'm not so sure. Could be yet. Danger here as Van Persie tries to put it back into a good position and wins the corner. And uh, Henri was furious he didn't knock it into the middle. Uh, very, very tight in there. There's a player that operates in very tight positions with quick feet. On this occasion, just couldn't quite get it out of his feet to deliver. Oh, his lops missed it completely and got away with it somehow. Might have got a fingertip to it actually because it's the corner on the other side. Every score from Henri. And it's cut out to Diaby and now to Piers. Well, the problem is Arsenal can't keep squandering chances like that if they're really going to win this game tonight. I do sense that they're certainly in the ascendancy. Great play from Thierry Henry. As it comes back, Diaby, poor touch, falls for. Pires, a uh, player of his quality, should hit the target, I think. Seven goals he's got this season, he scored 17 last season and 19 the season before that. Larson, again, needed to get it on his right, but did clear the ball. Clark. Mullins back to Clark. He's dropped that short. Larson play. Got involved straight away. Very got well attacked the ball. Brave header. It's been a difficult night for Clark making his premiership there, you remember. And right back. It's been a bit of a problem position for West Ham. Thomas Rapke has gone back to uh, his homeland. The Czech Republic now. Christian Daly has been filling in there. Too successfully by all accounts recently, but he's suspended anyway tonight. Juru for Arsenal. Diaby. And Percy. 
Emerson into it by Gavido. There's Rio Coca. Harewood on the run. Didn't quite pick him out, but Harewood's strong enough to pose a problem for Larson anyway. Very good goal, Larson, because Harewood's very quick, as we know. Kept his composure, kept up with Harewood. Turned out of the situation very nicely. Youngberg, a wide open game this now, and Arsenal go in search of their equaliser. Yeah, this is the problem now, as Arsenal do search for the equaliser, they can be hit on the break, we saw it in the first half. Harewood, and Arsenal again, nicked it off his toe. Henri, and Clark can feel a lot happier about that. This one's a total grandchild and children about, isn't it? But Henri hasn't given up yet. <laughs> Perhaps you won't tell the grandchildren about what happened eventually. Not too happy with the referee. Uh, took the ball off of Thierry Henry and then ran it out of play. Yeah, you'd leave that <laughs> second ball out, wouldn't you? Harmony. Diaby. And gets it back. And that's a lovely ball forward, but just too much on it in the end, enabling Clark to make the intervention. That has been on occasion, just that final pass, just the angle of the pass, the pace of the pass. Just let Arsenal down. Senderos. One-way traffic again, but this is how the first half started, remember? And West Ham then raced into a two-goal lead at one point. A great bit of chicory from Jungberg. Helping it forward, Juru's there to win it back. And again, three quarters of the possession has gone to Arsenal. Yeah, it's exactly the same in the first half. The only risk that Arsenal really run is being hit on the break. They've got all the possession. They look the more likely to score the second goal for themselves. They just don't need those individual errors at the back. And Howard could get in here. Ball arriving now for Benayoun. He won't brush him off the ball, that's for sure. He's done really well here. Benayoun's cross. And Leo Coco hesitated. And now he was asking to win it back. Larson. It was hard for a right footed player on this side. And he'll drag it back. Henri, Diaby, Romani. Looking good here now in this movement. Diaby, Jungberg, it's a splendid attack this, can they finish it off with a goal? And Chesky denies them. Yeah, so keeping the ball very well. Just again, that final pass has to be spot on if they're going to get the chance on goal. And you do feel over time they will create chances. Leo Coca deep inside his own half, winning the ball back. Now Kincheski just got caught in possession there, the left back. Unfortunately for him, Hayden Mullins wins it back. Now Zamora has got to make the most of this opportunity. And across to no one really. Yeah, he's only striker up there, he's really got to try and hold it up. See if he can get support to him. What a moment. You would suggest it could only be a matter of time before Arsenal score again. Freddie Youngberg. Oh, put the outside of the post, I think. Yeah, Thierry Henry. Arms out. Thinks himself, why didn't you pull it back to me? Ben Young was fouled by Larson. His Premier League debut, well, he wouldn't have wished to be out there. He was a little bit reckless, but it was his first foul. Maybe he might have just given him a second chance. But he just nicks it away from him. And the studs are showing, I think maybe Mark Hulsey's got that right, putting him in the book. Well, he wouldn't have been expecting the opportunity properly. He's playing out of position, and he's now on the tightrope, a portion to his now. He's trying to take as long as 
they can over the free kick. And it wasn't a very good one by Clark. Straight back to Larson. And Sandoval will be happier in the middle. In the middle. That's not bad ball. Not to reach that. Clark. And Ayun keeps it in play. He's good in these situations running at defenders. Mullins. All the way back to Danny Gabidon. And Chesky. And they've got it back here with Van Persie. Finding Henri, bowled over by Ferdinand. There's no doubt about it. Jerry Henry got to the ball first, and uh, as he got to the ball, Ferdinand did go into him. I think there's no, no debate that it's a free kick. I'm proud wanted to see uh, more than that, or a bane for a card. I might be applauding a goal in a second, because this is a very dangerous position, this. And Percy teeing it up, there's a good view of... Luckily, how they will see it, the Arsenal players, Shaka Hislop with the uh, opposite perspective, of course. And Percy and Pires over the ball for Arsenal. That's how they made this sort of area for Van Percy to feel. Well, he scored one from about here, didn't he, against Wigan in the Carling Cup semi-final. Played it beautifully over the wall and into the net. Repeated the feat. Yeah, they certainly got good pace on it. Just takes the slightest deflection off of Gabidon's right foot. I think he's just missing the target, mind. An hour gone here in the Barclays English Premier League. Arsenal 1, West Ham 2. The eighth Arsenal corner. Still in, is it? It's not going to go out for West Ham and has now. I'm just trying to really get a little bit of pace on the ball, Thierry Omri. As he was with Freddie Lundberg, got to the byline, could have pulled it back. Most of the avenues were maybe blocked off. Just tried to maybe full check his up at the near post. That's the West Ham fans you can hear in the background with their famous uh, blowing bubbles anthem. But their team is under pressure again here. Oh, good interception by Clark. And it needed to be. And it fell nicely as well. And West Ham withstand this pressure. Youngberg. Danger here, and Percy twists and turns, and then dispossessed by Rio Coca. Evidently. Zamora. Kuczewski, he was caught there by the DRB. I think the referee might uh, produce a little yellow card. Not sure. And Wenger. Well, the news, by the way, on the half time substitution of the Arsenal defender, Sol Campbell. We can confirm it was for tactical reasons, there was no injury problem involved. And apparently, and Campbell wasn't too happy about it, as you can expect. Immediately showered and changed and has left the ground. I think we might be hearing more about that story. He well, always felt as soon as he never appeared for the second half that something wasn't quite right. Well, it's very difficult to keep things under wraps these days in the high-profile world of Premier League football. It used to be a little... Uh, Behind closed doors in the dressing room aren't anymore. 
Ferdinand's clearance finds Harewood. Good space on that left hand side for Everington. Leo Coca. He's done well here, but yes. Last possession. He feels he should have had a free kick. Got his free kick. Yeah, I think you're right. Another change on the way for last hand. I say another change. This in fact will be their first substitution, of course. But first, they've got this free kick in a good area here. Edwards and Mora, the two. Uh, Possible targets for Koncheski. He made it much too easy for Lehman, who does lose his uh, <laughs> leg occasionally, doesn't he? <laughs> Needless little uh, notification there. Very irritable person, is he? He's not a happy bunny. Arsenal flow forward again. Give it away again. Not for long, got it back now. And Reed beats Clark with ease. <laughs> Couldn't beat the goalkeeper, it was the finest of angles. Oh, it was. Clark just gets very tight to him and gets kidding. He just opens his body out and he's looking to just drift it inside that far post. Drives in here, he knows he's got the opportunity. You see him just look up there. Just measures it, just gets it slightly wrong. It does give me the opportunity to tell you that his goal in the first half is his 151st lead goal for Arsenal, and that means he has overtaken Cliff Bastin as the club's record lead goal scorer. He was already Arsenal's leading goal scorer of all time, of course. And then just one short of 200 for the Gunners, as Rossi Benayoun is replaced by Sean Newton for West Ham. Newton has been the most frequently used substitute in the Premiership all season, by the way. This is now his 16th appearance off the bench. This <laughs> is going against Hayward, I believe. And the pink is smack in the face for Sanderos. Tough lad, though. I'm sure there might be some interesting repercussions to that Sol Campbell story. And that's for another day. Here we've still got uh, well, a quarter of the game remaining. And Arsenal have still got a lot of hard work to do. It looks as though maybe Sean Newton will play down that right hand side. A little bit better defensively than maybe Ben Ayew. This time going with Zamora and here with the two up top now. Really interesting game tactically as well. Konczewski. Away by Juru. Mullins. Edmonton wins the throw. And West Ham moves up a few more precious seconds. Back at the top level, of course, after a two year absence. Not promoted through the playoffs last season. And the last two clubs who came up that way were both relegated. I don't think that's going to become three out of three. Henri's in a great position in the middle here, but he will have to wait, or will he? As the ball is won back brilliantly by Van Persie, and he got his shot in. Yeah, he shouldn't really have been allowed to win that back the second time, Van Persie. Got his shot away, and shot his up just for a split second. It just popped out, but managed to gather it in the second attempt. Senderos. Giving away to Ferdinand. And for Herwood to challenge for and win. And that caused the moment's panic in the Arsenal defence, but the offside flags on it. And um, Pardew's gone a little bit more energy and defensive quality down the right hand side with Newton, but they're going with two up front again, just giving him a chance to maybe retain the ball. When West Ham get it forward. Well, come off the hour, come off the man, is Dennis Bergkamp about to come to Arsenal's rescue as he has done so often before. Oh, 
lost his clearance. Zamora, seems an awful long time ago since he scored that goal now. Right one is here, Real Coca. Uh, Newton on uh, this uh, near side now, contesting the throw, but not getting it. Larson takes it early. Diaby. It's outside. They needed it early, Thierry Henry. So Simon with a pass and a run, didn't quite marry together. And this time, do have the poorest defensive record of any team in the top half of the Premier League, so there's always hope in Arsenal's goal-scoring ability that they can still rescue, if not go on and win this game. But at the same time, West Ham have scored a respectable number of goals, 33 now, that's actually more than Liverpool, who are in third place. Senderos. He's from the knee. And certainly Arsenal have made individual mistakes at the back tonight, but you can't keep creating the amount of good situations that they do in an attacking sense and never finishing things off. Diaby is the player to be replaced. The 19-year-old doesn't complete his first start in the Premier League. And as Dennis Bergkamp comes on in his place for the last 20 minutes. And he was pretty sparingly this season, Bergkamp. But what a tremendous signing he was all those years ago, over 10 years ago now. Roberto. And got to take on Konczewski again. Everton doubling up. Jungberg got his cross in. Nervy headed away by Clark. Not too convincing. Van Persie slips. But still finds the skipper. He couldn't find Pirat. Oh, what a possession, but they... <laughs> lost their shape a little bit, I suppose, with all the changes, that was inevitable for Arsenal. And what a good ball that was for Freddy Jumbe. And he got his cross in again. Yeah, good ball out from Larson to Lundberg. Just can't quite get the finish in it at the moment, Arsenal. Still a long time for West Ham to hold on here. Gilberto. Lundberg's been much more prominent in the second half. That ball into Thierry Henry. You can sense here the crowd believe that a second Arsenal goal is just around the corner. But West Ham are defending very well and in numbers. Bergkamp, can he open the lock, I wonder? Oh, that might have gone out. Now the referee said play on, and Larson returns it to Van Persie. Well, he's certainly getting held back, I think, there, Van Persie, and that's what he's complaining about. Clever play from Larson. Great little ball inside the fullback. Because of the cleverness of the pass there, you see it. There well, you see Van Persie having his shirt pulled back. And every right to complain. Second change in quick succession. We need the fresh legs, of course, now to survive this Arsenal onslaught, and that means a debut for them for Dean Ashton, the player signed from Norwich. From the crew, Alexander, and England in the 21 pair who are running here when he was at crew. Arsene Wenger tried to sign him for Arsenal, I believe. First thing you have to do is defend. Bergkamp. They can thread it through this time. A strong run from Leo Coca and a good ball as well. Howard picks out the cross. They can't take too many risks like that, West Ham. Hindberg. A good second half he's had. 
Roberto. Arsenal come at you, they come at you from all angles. Bergkamp. Stabbed away by Gavidon. Here's Jungberg again. This time it's Ferdinand who gets it clear. Uh, the problem that Arsenal faced on many occasions this season is that they've been shown inside into the central areas where it's very congested, not a lot of space. Eye of a needle pass every time Arsenal are looking for. And at the moment it's not coming off. And here's Bergkamp, couldn't return it to Henri, proving your point. Well, no, on that occasion it should have come off a better ball just in front of Henri, and I'm sure he would have had a finish. Now Van Persie, great run by him, but not a good ball. Not a great situation, those are begging. Relentless pressure now from the Gunners. Lovely crisp one-twos, another corner. Can West Ham hold on here? And Arsenal can't keep getting in these positions and not making the most of it. They only have themselves to blame at the end of this because they had so many good areas that they've been in. 15 minutes to go at Highbury and the Barclays English Premier League. West Ham clinging on to their 2 1 advantage. Further change, that's three substitutes in about one, 10, 15 minutes. Carl Fletcher about to come on. And replace the Premier uh, League debutant, Carl Clark, who <laughs> is uh, not surprisingly blowing for tugs, as they say. He's had a good workout. Big step up, isn't it, from the uh, level of football he's been used to with Stoke City to this. to the near post to help defend Van Persie's corner. Well, Bill Ashton is a striker, he's now made two excellent clearances from uh, Arsenal corners. Well, he is good in the air and he will do well defensively, and that's a part of the reason he's on. Yeah. Well, we can look forward rather than back. Good hold-up player as well. Still threatening inside the area, but this time he's got to race back as Pires races forward. Sweeping ball, knocked away by Ferdinand. He hammers it long. Oh, now that's an interesting challenge from Sandoros. The West Ham fans and manager are furious. They believe they should have had a penalty kick. Well, I certainly think it's worth a shout. I'd like to see it again. It's a situation that Arsenal have been done on on several occasions in recent weeks. The James Beattie goal. The Wigan goal. He lashed out at Lehman, but I must say, Lehman's the kind of character who could try to an argument in the phone box in the Sahara Desert, couldn't he? He was always looking for trouble. Lehman started that one off, and Hayward just retaliated. Is that just that clearance up the pitch that has been the undoing of Arsenal in recent games? And that's the fourth official, as usual, who gets it in the net. Derso's turn tonight. Well, a number of uh, talking points in that incident. It might have been a penalty, and there could easily have been two red cards shown there. Lehman's taken the goal kick, uh, the free kick rather, with uh, Hayward and the physio who's still on the pitch. He is Mr. Angry, isn't he? Lands Lehman. Remember, he's been sent off five times in his career. Talking points galore in this game. Really watchable game, and uh, the best could be yet to come. And Percy's offside. The 
it's just broken up that little bit of momentum that Arsenal had. It's the ninth to kick off, a couple of points behind Blackburn, who are playing Manchester United tonight. Position almost irrelevant if they can hold on here and take three points away from Highbury, it would be some achievement. And they won it back, and they cross into a dangerous area. And a chance for Etherington, it's gone in. Etherington has surely won it now for West Ham United. Just over 10 minutes to go. Perez in his attempts to keep the ball out, only succeeded in helping it in. Well, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Ashton puts Senderis under pressure, Larson miscontrols it. And there goes Rhea Coca, pulls it back. Everington comes onto it, hits it, takes a deflection. And in desperation, Robert Perez trying to clear it off the line, helps it into his own goal. It's a strike. A little bit unfortunate the way it goes in from Arsenal's point of view, but <laughs> that man's not too bothered about all that, is he? Absolutely not. Ten minutes to go. West Ham restore their two-goal advantage. And they're on the verge now of their first victory at Highbury for 11 years. And match number 2000 at this famous historic stadium Looks as though it could end in disappointment for Arsenal. Now they will throw everyone forward. And Percy goes down, and the Newton's challenge nothing given. Actually, another one for the dubious goals panel to sort out. Is it Everington's goal or an own goal by Perez? Well, as Paul was quite rightly says, West Ham and Everington couldn't give a hoot at the moment. That's 3 1 up here. Oh! Is there another player who would have had the audacity to even try that? Never mind, nearly pull it off. Yeah, the problem here is it's another decent situation. Omri's got himself into. He's weighing up who he can maybe set it off to. There's not a lot on, so he decides to go for the spectacular. And it's not far away. But not far away. He's not quite been good enough for Arsenal tonight. Anthem it is ringing around Highbury again, and a former Arsenal great Martin Keogh must be horrified at some of the defending he's seen from his former team tonight. I think him and Tony Adams would have led in the goals that uh, this Arsenal back forward conceded. He's back helping out behind the scenes now, by the way, Keogh. Well, when you think of it, it's a catalogue of errors, wasn't it? Senderus, then Larson. It took a couple of deflections on the way through. We need that bit of luck in the game, and this time we've certainly had that on occasions tonight. Good muscular challenge by Kincheski. Ashton, showing how well he can hold the ball. Gotcha. It's not bad. Anton's cross is useful as well. Nelson's defence, you feel, is all at sea whenever they're attacked. There was a time, of course, when you could read off those names, Sweden in goal, Dixon, Keown, Bold, Adams, Winterbank, but now the faces have changed and are continuously changing, it seems, this season. And there's no real cohesion there. Everton wins his team another corner, and not ironic that his winning goal takes the three points because, of course, Whisper it quietly used to play for Spurs. There's a little bit of calmness with Ashton on the pitch, holding it up well, not panicking. Alatelli showing him there, just playing it inside the full back. This has been a mightily impressive performance from West Ham. Even though they've ridden their luck at times. When you think about it, Paul, uh, Shaka Hislop actually hasn't had many saves to make. The men in front of him have done the job. Oh, that's right. But, uh, I think Arsenal had several very good situations that certainly haven't made the most of. 
as you say, West Ham got bodies in the way, they've defended. Changed it tactically after about 20 minutes, Harewood went to that right-hand side. Frustrated Arsenal, got their second goal. Certainly with uh, Arsenal scoring just before half-time, they thought it was going to be a long second half for West Ham, but now they've got that third goal. And it's hardly a crisis for Arsenal, they are on the man's sixth in the table and still in the Champions League. But clearly there are some longer-term problems that need sorting here. But until they can get a settled back for uh, Lara and Toure. We've got Campbell's obviously upset at the moment with what's happened tonight. Whether or not that will blow over remains to be seen. Unfamiliar times, unfamiliar faces. But here's one very familiar face trying to bring the back into it. Van Persie hammers it straight into the crowd of players. <laughs> After you, Claude, no, isn't it? Uh, I mean, but that's what they've done well tonight, West Ham. They've got. Bodies in the way, and they backed each other up defensively. Well, Arsenal score goals for the freedom that not many other teams possess. But with five minutes to go now, they need two just to rescue it. And they almost got one back there, and a splendid save by his lot. I said he hadn't had much to do, he did then to deny Pires. Yeah, he's had to keep his concentration for long periods. This is a great little ball in. Little setback from Henri. Quick, quick fire take from Perez. And his lot had to be lively down to his left hand side. Oh, here in neutral, he must have really enjoyed this game. Perez is in there again, stepped away again from inside the six yard box. Senderos tries an overhead kick. West Ham corner. Well, it's not a fluke that West Ham keep getting bodies in the way. Players there can smell the victory. And just making sure they get bodies there. Close people down quickly. West Ham within sight of their most significant victory since winning promotion back to the Premier League. And a victory that will lift their spirits no end. Remember, they've lost on each of their last eight visits to Highbury before tonight. Free kick. And there's a worried man. I suppose too many teams could have survived all the changes that Arsenal had to make. But you um, don't get any sympathy for them in the league table. Uh, players way, being away, injuries. You can't use that as an excuse either. They've got a big squad Arsenal. Really been severely tested of late. Just to compound things, a Sol Campbell situation. That's a lovely ball from the middle to Van Persie. Just needed that fraction more on it just to take the defender out of the equation. And undoubtedly, there are some outstanding youngsters that are somewhere running through here, but that's exactly what they are, isn't it? Youngsters with uh, very little experience at this level. So it's going to take time for them to bed in and get used to it. The phrase transitional season certainly comes to mind. It's proving to be that for Arsenal. West Ham going from strength to strength here. And Coker feeding it into Ashton. Well, that's a great ball, it could have been another, and should have been another. For Harewood in the middle, but he's offside anyway. That's good play, though, from West Ham. Ashton just setting it off. And Flamini slips, Etherington down the left-hand side, but as he plays it in, Harewood just drifted into an offside position. Into another little row there between Harewood and Elena. Well, that doesn't surprise us, does it? No. Nope. Surprise! The watching football world is that scoreline though. Arsenal one, West Ham three. That's well. West Ham win, but they've been generous. Perez, there's no way through. Roberto. Perkham hits it. Good save again. But turned in this time by Perez. 
Hold on to your seats, it might not be over yet. Oh, it's going to be a nervy few minutes now for West Ham. It's a great volley from Dennis Burkamp. Gilberto just stands it up. Burkamp lets it come across his body. Great contact. Good save, you've got to say, from Shaka Islock. But he's got good pace on it. As it pops out, there's Robert Pires on the spot to drive it home. Didn't have time to think about it, just reacted. What a good finish. 3-2. If you're a West Ham fan, start biting your nails. I would imagine as well there will be quite some stoppage time because we've had a whole host of substitutions and various other stoppages. I would think we're looking at at least three, maybe even four minutes. Yeah. That can seem a long time. <laughs> If you're holding on to a lead. And you cannot afford to give the ball away like that last time. Ashton slides in. Always on the fourth official now. How much stop his time? He'll be at it. Fletcher for West Ham. And there's going to be four minutes of stoppage time. Takes four seconds to score a goal. Newton slams it into the crowd. This comes third goal. Seeming to be enough for them, but maybe not. And they conceded a corner. Now for a split second, I just thought Thierry Henry was going to get turned in the box there. Pressure's still on. Palm heads needed now in that West Ham defence. Perez is there again, straight into his lot's hands. They just slow it down and try and take the sting out of the game. And it's time if West Ham can to get it down the other end and in the corners. Just try and run the clock down. Enormous kick by Hislop. <laughs> I'm sure Sam West knew what he was doing there. There was a big oom from the crowd. <laughs> well, the way things are going for Arsenal at the back, you just see that one going in, couldn't you? Uh -huh. No problem for Hislop this time. Very experienced people all know how to run the clock down here. Slightly in an offside position, but that's enough. Certainly wasn't on there, was it? <laughs> well, that bubbles song, the final line is just like their dreams, they fade and die. And I wonder if West Ham's dreams could yet fade and die here. I and mean, they said that, even a draw could be a terrific result, but uh, the way the game's gone, it would still be a big disappointment for them not to win now. They've got another free kick, another offside. Yeah, they, they weren't to see it through. A draw would seem like a defeat almost. Yeah, he's not offside, is he? Not this time. A oh, minute to go. Poor decision for the referee's assistant there. And this is where West Ham have to keep it in the Arsenal half. We're in the fourth minute. Half West Ham, see this game out. Larson, the crowd imploring him to knock it long. Well, we played less than the four minutes allotted, and West Ham United, thanks to an ex Tottenham Hotspur player, have beaten Arsenal here. Matthew Etherington with the crucial goal, and look at that smile.
on Alan Pardew's face. A scowl on Thierry Henry's, however, as he disappears back into the dressing room. Arsenal have lost again. That's their eighth Premier League defeat of the season. But all credit here to West Ham United, who are on the back foot in terms of possession for most of this game, or certainly much of it, but who scored three splendid opportunist goals. It was nail-biting at the end, when Arsenal came back to get their second, but those West Ham fans will enjoy the moment, and why not? It's finished at Highbury. Arsenal 2, West Ham United 3. Superb entertainment for the 2000th fixture at Highbury. Rio Coca shooting West Ham into a lead against the run of play at that stage. But it was a lead they were to double just a few minutes later, thanks to that splendid finish by Bobby Zamora. Then just before half-time, Thierry Henry with a telling touch for what proved to be his record-breaking goal. And 2-1 at that stage. But West Ham refused to give up, despite all the pressure, and when Edrington fired the ball goalwards, Perez just helped it on its way in. A very nervy finish, though, for West Ham as Perez made it two, but West Ham held on.